Well, so we're getting ready for the holidays, and while it's stressful, it can bring a new set of challenges for seniors. Brittany Tidrick from Seneca House and Rutherford House Assisted Living joins us with Marilyn Dorsey, family nurse practitioner at Tiffin Psychiatry, with what we can do to ease some of those concerns. Good morning, ladies. Thanks for joining us today. Good morning. Thank you very much. Absolutely. So tell me a little bit about what can bring on some depression this time of year. So seasonal depression can be brought on by many different things and can be an accumulation of many things. Um, the change in the weather. So as it gets colder, the snow starts flying, it gets icy out. Um, it, seniors are more less likely to, to go out, more likely to stay in and stay home where it's safe. There's less fear of falling that way. Um, if when the weather um, with the time change, um, that can cause some depression as well because seniors aren't able to, to get out and do the things that they'd like to do, especially if driving at night has become more difficult. That can present a huge challenge. Um, and then also their family members, especially those with young kids around the holiday season while schools and different things are in session, um, in particular with how that looks now in schools and the extra attention of uh, kind of modified schedules, um, that can make it more difficult for family members to call and visit and have that extra time to spend. So seniors can be left feeling isolated and very lonely during this time. Yeah, everybody's really, really busy uh, right now. So what are some of the signs and symptoms that we should be looking for in some of those older adults in our life? Well, uh, seasonal affective disorder, also known as SAD, S-A-D is like you said, as it's a type of depression that is related to changes in seasons. And some of the signs and symptoms that uh, you may see is a lack of motivation or lack of energy, uh, sometimes changes in the appetite and sleeping habits. There's also maybe an increase in anxiety and lack of personal care where they're just not uh, taking care of themselves as much as they did before. Um, there's social withdrawal, just not wanting to be out around people anymore. Uh, they are, they may be more moody. Um, feelings of helplessness or hopelessness, feelings of guilt, and sometimes frequent thoughts of death and even suicide. So these are significant. If, if we notice some of these signs or symptoms, who should folks reach out to? You can always start by reaching out to your family physician um, who can assess and discuss the symptoms and uh, treatment options with the patient and family. Uh, you can also contact Tiffin Psychiatry to be evaluated and treated. Now, I think this time of year, and of course for, for older adults as we've talked about, uh, but really for anyone, we might start to feel sad, right, or, or some of these symptoms. So what are some ways that we can combat that? Some of the things that, that can be done um, is light therapy, um, because like you had said earlier, it is getting darker earlier, and um, so people are just not getting that sunlight that they used to. The so light therapy is a, a great thing to, to use. Uh, there's always medications that can be used to, to help. Um, psychotherapy or talk therapy, uh, going to counseling or a therapist uh, will help talk through things. Um, there's relaxation techniques, uh, meditation, uh, guided imaging, and uh, like what they do at a lot of um, facilities and uh, communities is music and art. And there's also um, equine therapy that's, that's been very successful. Yeah, so a lot of options there that maybe some of us uh, could find helpful during this time of year. Brittany, for folks who might be staying or living in an assisted living facility, what are some ways that uh, you guys can help those folks? So assisted living can be helpful in many ways, um, even beyond the traditional medical care. Um, in an assisted living community, you can receive social and emotional support. Um, you not only get to interact with the caregivers, but um, those seniors will be interacting with their peers and have some support from a, a friendship level as well as the medical support and the, um, the family support. Um, assisted living can provide balanced nutrition for the seniors, um, which is great, especially this time of year when getting out to go to the grocery store can be very difficult. Um, uh, often a task that, that we may take for granted. Um, can be very difficult for some people and that can lead to lack of nutrition. So your, your assisted living community um, would provide meals, snacks, make sure that um, that, that nutrition is, is a well-balanced 
this meal. Um, and the social activity can range in, in many different interests, um, depending on the community that you're at and what your interests may be, but just to keep people motivated and um, keep them you know, active, engaged, and exercising, and all of the things that help us um, feel good on the inside and out. So if folks at home are listening and they, they need some more information, how do they get in touch with you guys? You can give Seneca House or Rutherford House a call, or you can reach me directly at 419-603-7544. And I'm happy to help answer any questions about assisted living in general or about our community specifically. And you can also uh, contact Tiff in Psychiatry. Dr. Rana is a psychiatrist and myself, and um, we are accepting new patients. And the number is 419-447-0269. Wonderful. The number right there on your screen, ladies. Uh, valuable information this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Yep, take care.